Hey everybody, Craig Cuddle, Director of Nature Reliance School. I went on a turkey hunt this morning and didn't get a turkey, but I had a good time and I'll tell you a story about that at the end of this video. But I went through the process of what I do to try to do the best I can to ensure I don't get any ticks on me. And I realized I've never made a video on that subject. I've been interviewed for magazines and a couple of blogs and stuff of that nature, but I've never put anything out myself. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. All right, so the first thing we need to do is understand three main things that are going to help ticks find us. The first off is carbon dioxide. When we're sweating and we're breathing heavy, we're gonna put off more carbon dioxide. So anything that you do outside where you're gonna be exerting a lot of energy, just be aware, you're gonna be more likely to get ticks on you. Number two, if you're going through thick brush. So if you're going through thick brush, then you wanna be able to take some of the necessary precautions that we're gonna detail later. And the third is if you're going through a moisture rich environment like wet grass and wet brush, you've kinda of exasperate the issue if you're doing that. So if you can alleviate each part of those, then you're gonna be less likely to get ticks on you to begin with. And if you're doing all three of those, then you're gonna be very likely to get ticks on you, but we've got some answers for that as well. All right, so if you're like me, it's gonna be nearly impossible for you to avoid one and sometimes all three of those. So there are some precautions that we can take as well. There's a lot of chemicals out there that you can utilize. Uh, the, our go-to source is permethrin. Uh, Sawyer makes this product that you can find in a lot of big box stores and stuff of that nature. You definitely wanna utilize this on fabric, not on your skin. I'm gonna show you how to do that with my turkey hunting gear. The other one is DEET and DEET comes in a lot of different forms. And I'm also gonna show you how I utilize this to help keep mosquitoes and ticks off of me. And that way we can avoid those together when we have to go in those environments that are either we're exerting a lot of energy, we're in deep brush, or we're gonna be in an area where it's gonna be moisture rich. All right, before we go over there and do that, I need to tell you this, cause I almost forgot. You need to do a tick check at least every 24 hours. The research has been there for years that a tick has to be attached to you for nearly 24 hours for it to cause significant problems like Lyme disease and stuff of that nature. But uh, some good research came out last year. It appears that it can be happening as less, in less than 12 hours. So check yourself at least, at least every 24 hours, if not twice a day when you can. And this device right here is one of the best things that you can utilize for that because some of the places on your body are hard to find, particularly if you're by yourself. So you can set up the video on this to video yourself where you need to. And that way you can check yourself out. This is what I utilize all the time in the field by myself. And that way I can check out all those hard to reach spots where it's difficult, if not impossible for me to see. And that way I can find ticks, get rid of them before they cause a problem. If I do find an attached tick, it's not the end of the world. Pull off directly at 90 degrees from your body, grasp it at the head. That's why having some sort of tweezers is a good thing to have in your kit. And if you find that you have had a tick on you, go to the doctor, just go to the doctor. They have antibiotics to take care of it uh, in most situations. So make sure you go see your doc. Now let's go take a look at these clothes. Hey, just a couple of precautions when you utilize this stuff. I always wear rubber gloves. It's vital that you do that so you don't get it on your skin. And make sure you take the time to read all the information on the back so you utilize it safely. So uh, if there's a first aid need, then it tells you what you need to do and what you need to tell a first aid provider, okay? So what I wanna do is take you through my process of what I did a couple of days ago to get my gear ready for turkey hunting. I say turkey hunting because it's one of the uh, activities that I do outside where I literally go out and sit down on the ground in a lot of different spots and very likely to be in an area where there's gonna be ticks. So that's something to be aware of. So we're gonna start from the ground up and I'm gonna show you how I prepare all the things that I wear in just such an event. First one's gonna be my boots. So my boots, uh, I take the shoestrings that I tie just so I don't grab a hold of them and, and get this on my hands and tuck them down into my boot. And then I do a pretty liberal job of spraying this onto the boots themselves uh, on the inside and not on the inside of the boot, but on the inner portion of the boot here and all around. This is going to be one of the most likely places for ticks to get onto me as I'm walking through brush. So I really take 
uh, time to put a lot on my boots. So next is my pants, and I usually change the spray nozzle so that uh, I'm using in a finer mist spray. And that way I can get it broadcast really well onto the pants. And I'll do a, a light coat on it, and I make sure I hit really heavy right around the waistband and right around the end at the hem of the pants to make sure that I get both sides covered. Now, I will let that dry, and after doing that, I'll flip it over and do the other side. Now, the jacket is much similar to the pants. I'm gonna put a light spray over the whole jacket, and particularly focus, look, I'm focusing a lot of attention on the hood. I'll explain why in just a minute. But I definitely put a liberal amount on the ends of the sleeves, on the hem of the jacket, because again, those are gonna be the main entry points. Now this particular style of clothing, ticks can probably go through some of the poorest portions of this anyway, but for a regular jacket, and that's what I'm trying to demonstrate, you definitely wanna get along these hems and the ends of the sleeves. All right, so uh, a very important aspect of this is whatever hat you're gonna wear. Like this is my boonie hat, and I am going to put a liberal amount again of this on the hat because that's not going to make skin contact with me. I'm going to let it sit in the sun and dry because a lot of the ticks will come down out of the, the tall vegetation, whether it's tree or bushy material, whatever, and you want something that's going to repel them from your head. Now specific to turkey hunting, I'm going to put a fair amount on the seat cushion of my turkey vest. This is my vest. If you're not familiar with these, you wear a vest and this unclips and this is the seat that you sit on because this is what's gonna make primary contact with the ground, then I'm gonna put quite a bit on it so that it helps to repel the ticks from me as well. Last but not least, gators are a fantastic piece of equipment that I put a fair amount of spray on these, and I'll do this two or three times a week. So no matter what I'm doing outside, I'm gonna have some permethrin, permethrin, I don't know exactly how you say that, on these gaiters, and I can just slip these on no matter what pair of pants that I'm wearing, and I've got something that's gonna help repel ticks. All right, so this stuff, again, is very powerful, and you can utilize this on your equipment as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be just on your clothes. So if you have a tent, you can put it on the tent, a hammock, or whatever it might be, and spray it directly on there. Again, just be aware with anything that you're gonna put on any surface, you wanna do a little test spot before you actually utilize it, and that way you know it's not gonna stain or break down the, the fabric of the material that you're utilizing it on. All right, now that we're done with that, we can utilize some DEET, and I know that's what you're thinking. Where's the DEET? The DEET's right there. <laughs> so we can utilize this DEET, uh, and it's not gonna be as problematic to utilize this on your skin, but again, I still avoid it whenever possible. But what I will utilize this for, and this comes in great use, is I will utilize this around my waistband of my pants. I will utilize it on the base of my pants as well and at the cuffs to keep chiggers off of me. If you don't know what chiggers are, I'll have that in the blog. So there's gonna be a lot more information in the blog for you to check out too. I've got some old uh, blog postings as well, podcasts where I've been interviewed about this very subject. I hope that helps. Again, you don't have to be a turkey hunter to be able to utilize these substances on your clothes, but uh, that'll give you an idea. I just say turkey hunting because turkey hunters are typically out in the middle of weeds and sitting down in the woods and anything of nature where you're gonna run into chiggers and ticks and mosquitoes and all that good stuff. So uh, real useful equipment to keep that stuff off of you. Uh, don't forget, do everything you can to not make skin contact uh, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence for other things out there that people can use. Uh, there's no real hard scientific data out there. So if you're utilizing something and it works, keep using it. If you've got an essential oil that works for you, then by God, I'll use it, but just don't pretend that it's gonna work for everybody in the world. These two substances have been proven in the laboratory in thousands of tests to work on ticks and mosquitoes and chiggers and stuff of that nature. That's why I'm a big fan of it. But by all means, if you've got some home concoction that works, then utilize it. Go for it, do everything you can. Now, with that said, I told you I've got a story for you about turkey hunting this morning. If you wanna stay after the graphic, the thing that's getting ready to come up, then come back for that. And if not, come on, join in. Let's learn together.
All right, so here's the story. Uh, I was unsuccessful getting a turkey, but it's a pretty cool story. I don't know what Cedar's up to. She's hanging out or not hanging out, but anyway. So I uh, got out in the woods before daylight, was walking up this old logging road, and there were no gobblers gobbling. I'm talking zero. And just a few days ago, there was five or six in this location. So uh, I was just really concerned. And I knew an area where they like to roost because I see them roosting there nearly every day because that's near where I write. And as I'm walking up the hill, I just pull out my turkey call and purred a little bit. And when I did, one answered me back. It wasn't a gobbler. So I set up shop, sit there and waiting. And I've got my, my shotgun up and I'm just waiting because I hear them come off the roost and they're coming over the hill and they're coming over the hill. And it's two hens. So two hens, pretty cool. Good opportunity, ended up lasting. This whole story lasted about two hours. I'm not gonna take that long. But uh, as I'm sitting there watching, I've got two hens right in front of me and they've got their heads popped up and then they're going down they're feeding and they're kicking leaves and getting some acorns and whatnot and kicking their head up and they have no idea that I'm there. They're about 20 yards away. And all of a sudden I see both their heads pop up and you can tell they're alarmed. And out of the corner of my eye, because they're so close, I'm not moving, right? I had put my shotgun down I'm kind of sitting here with a shotgun on my knee. And as I see coming out of the corner of my eye something and it's big. So as I look over, see what it is, it's a huge red tail hawk. Comes in, tries to grab one of the hens, and then takes off. So it's kind of like this, the red tail hawk's coming in, and just as it's about to get the turkey, she ducks her head and it goes by. So I think, well, that's pretty cool. You know, that's not something you see every day. So I'm sitting there watching, watching, and I saw where the red tail was, uh, had lit up in the tree, and the turkeys end up making their way, so they're incredibly close to me. I like, felt like I was gonna reach out and get them. And then I can see in the background, the red tail come off of the roost again, starts coming and swooping in to get the turkeys again. They're down feeding, have no idea that it's coming. About 10 yards out, this red tail opens or folds up, has his wings to slow himself down, talons out, getting ready to get this turkey, pops its head up. It has talons, I'm talking like feet, like it had to be five, six feet away from the turkey's head. And just as it's ready to hit it, Turkey puts its head down, goes off, takes on. So, no, I didn't get a turkey today, but man, when do you get to see that sort of stuff? Uh, I tell you that story is an encouragement for you to get out because the more you get out, the more wild and crazy stuff that you're going to see, and I just want to encourage you to do that. As always, come on, join in. Let's go see some cool stuff out in the woods together.